everybody, welcome to my home site and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to be looking at some new updates and developments in Israel. It seems like tensions are still simmering and even escalating. Uh, there's some new developments since the live stream that I did yesterday. Things that we're going to cover in this one, uh, this article called Arabs Try to Block the Return of the Kohenic, Kohenic Blessings to Jerusalem. Uh, we have right-wing activists plan Jerusalem flag march amid Temple Mount tensions. Um, and then we have uh, some airstrikes that took place in Gaza. Uh, now, the stream that we did yesterday was talking about how there was one rocket that was fired. It was intercepted by the, uh, I think it's called the Iron Dome um, missile defense system for Israel. But a rocket, a rocket was fired and subsequently there were uh, airstrikes in Gaza in response. Uh, and then we have this, Israelis march to West Bank Homesh amid tensions with Palestinians. And here you see uh, Edith Silman. This is the lady that uh, pulled out <clears throat> of the coalition uh, that helped to form the current government. Uh, she is a, a right-wing person. She's religious. And uh, anyway, we've done um, stories about, or a couple videos about her so make sure to go check those out. But anyway, let's start here. I want to read this article because uh, this is interesting. <clears throat> okay, so it says, On Monday, Arabs rioted the Temple Mount, attacking Israeli police to prevent Kohanim from blessing Israel. Now, Kohanim, there's a lot of new people on the channel. Uh, we talk about them somewhat frequently. Uh, these are the priests. Okay, so Kohanim, that means priest. So the Kohen Gadol, that's the high priest. There's not currently a high priest in Israel. Of course, in our church, we have high priests, we have priests, we have deacons, we have bishops. But in Judaism, uh, they just have the priests that are descendants of Aaron. And then you have the Levites, right? And Kohanim, they actually give blessings. And so uh, you can see it happening right here. Let me just play a little bit of this. You see them giving blessings. They're at the Western Wailing Wall. Uh, they're the ones that are underneath these, uh, like, shawls or these, um, whatever you want to call them. I have another video here. This is what it looks like uh, more up close. Uh, the first time I ever saw this was actually Rosh Hashanah last year, where uh, <clears throat> during one of the, sat the services, um... The rabbi asked if there were any kohanim, if they and if they wanted to participate and give a blessing, and so they did. And um, this is what it looks like. Uh, they're get, this is them giving a blessing, and the reason why they're underneath these um, shawls is because you're not supposed to look at the kohanim uh, while they're doing it. Um, in, in fact, <clears throat> if I remember right, during the Rosh Hashanah service, people. Uh, like looked away like they turned their backs on them not disrespectfully but in order to look away and then they, they cover themselves with these as they do the blessing so <clears throat> what we have here is um twice a year since 1970 during the second intermediary period days of passover in sukkot a mass priestly blessing takes place at the Kotel, Western Wall, in Jerusalem. This event is usually attended by tens of thousands of Jews, blessed by hundreds of Kohanim. Uh, the recent blessing attracted relatively few people, perhaps due to a wave of violence which included mass Arab riots on the Temple Mount. Uh, and that happened on Friday. Okay, that's, that's the day at sundown. That's the day that Passover started. Around 2,500 police officers were securing the area around the time of the prayers due to security concern or security reasons. The event is divided into two separate events, and another mass blessing will be held on Wednesday morning. Okay, so that's going to be tomorrow. Uh, <clears throat> Arabs attacked, attacked police on the Temple Mount, throwing rocks and attacking them with fireworks as the priestly blessing began. On Friday... Uh, we'll skip that part because we just talked about that. On Sunday, uh, Arabs attempt, attempted to block Jewish visitors to the Temple Mount by placing stones at the passageways used by Jews. They stockpiled rocks along with iron bars and makeshift barricades in the mosque. Five Israelis were injured uh, when ten buses carrying worshippers to the Western Wall were attacked with rocks. Um, I showed footage of that 
like within the last couple of videos, I can't remember exactly when, but you know they were attacking, they were attacking specifically buses that were on their way to the Western Wailing Wall, you know, because they would have been filled with Jews going there to pray or participate in the in the Kohanim blessings. So anyway, uh, also on Sunday, a group of ultra Orthodox Jews in prayer shawls um, were attacked while walking through the old city. The blessing is performed by Kohanim, male Jews, with priestly heritage who have a clear patrilineal tradition leading back to Aaron, Moses' high priest brother. The lineage is uh, rigorously protected, and its integrity has been proven in recent years, as scientists have discovered a genetic factor common to most Kohanim. So, it appears that they've actually been able to uh, maintain it according to science. So these really are most likely, uh, I, I would say undoubtedly, um, the original descendants of Aaron through all these thousands of years, which is which is pretty cool. Um, it says demographically, Kohanim have always represented about 5% of the Jewish population. The Temple Institute recently instituted a registry for the priesthood class as a step toward towards reinstating the temple service. And if you're not familiar with the Temple Institute, they are the ones that basically uh, are in authority. They've been given authority to um, <clears throat> create everything necessary for the temple, like when, when the third temple is built, if they're successful at doing that. Uh, we come to this website somewhat frequently. If you go to, which one is it? Study tools, vessels. You know what? I need to zoom out in order for this to show up. Vessels, gallery. If you go to study tools, vessels, gallery, you can come here and you can see that they have just absolutely everything ready. This would be what the high priest would wear. Uh, I've been doing a series of videos. Uh, it's a playlist called the 12 tribes of Israel. And uh, we started with Reuben and we just like went through and found out pretty much as, mu as much as we, we could about Reuben. And there's going to be future videos to add on because more information will come up in the future. But uh, we, we've taken a look at this. Each one of these uh, gemstones represent one of the 12 tribes of Israel, uh, if you're familiar with the Old Testament. Uh, let's see, golden table of showbread, okay, wine libation cup, wine libation vessel, small mitzrak. So here you go, and then Ark of the Covenant, of course, uh, which is kind of, I don't know, it's kind of surprising. Like, it, it seems like you know, this is like one of the most holy things, at least back in Old Testament days. And, uh, I mean, of course they're going to make it, of course. But um, it's just kind of amazing to see what their interpretation would be um, of what it what it looked like. And all this stuff is based on a lot of research, a lot of hard um, study and research into these things. Uh, you can read about it on the website. But anyway... Um, anyway, the, the Temple Institute, these are the people that have everything ready to go for the third temple. And so in this article that we're reading, it's saying that they're putting together a registry of Kohanim in preparation for, um, when temple services begin again, if that occurs. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So the priestly blessing is said daily during the year as part of the morning prayer service and twice during Sabbath and holy morning prayer services or holiday morning prayer services. Before saying the blessing, men from the tribe of Levi wash their hands, wash the hands of the Kohanim. And, and you know that there's <clears throat> so basically in Old Testament times you had the high priest. Uh, if I remember right, he was a like a the eldest son, like the, if you followed the line down, the eldest son of Aaron going down the line. I could have that wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's right. The eldest son, and then his eldest son, and so on. And then you had uh, the other descendants of Aaron, which were priests, and then everyone else that are that's in the tribe of Levi are Levites. But they're but they're all from the tribe of Levi. But um, you have Aaron's family, and then the rest of the 
the tribe of Levi. So, Levites wash the hands of the Kohanim. The ritual may only be performed by a Kohen, a priest. Um, wait, what? Performed by a Kohen and only in the presence of a... Yeah, okay. The ritual... So, the blessing. The ritual may only be performed by a Kohen, a priest, and only in the presence of a quorum of ten Jews. So, that's interesting. A Kohen who is under the influence of alcohol or in mourning may not perform the blessing. The blessing is performed by the priest holding their hands up with the fingers spread in the manner made famous by Leonard Nimoy, uh, which actually he is a Kohen, uh, played when he played Spock on the television series Star Trek. So if you don't know what that's referring to, uh, I'm sure you've seen this before, Live Long and Prosper. This is what they're doing with their hands as they're doing this right here. Okay, their hands are doing that. And uh, I have an article where it talks about this. Uh, the Jewish roots of Leonard Nimoy and Live Long and Prosper. Leonard Nimoy... Uh, f okay, let me scroll on. Leonard Nimoy first saw what became the famous Vulcan salute, Live Long and Prosper, as a child, long before Star Trek even existed. The placement of the hands comes from a childhood memory of an Orthodox Jewish synagogue service in Boston. And there's actually a video video here if you want to like see the whole thing, him talking about it. Um, he says, this is the shape of the letter Shin uh, in a 2013 interview, making the famous V gesture. The Hebrew letter Shin, he noted, is the first letter in several Hebrew words, including Shaddai, a name for God, Shalom, the word for hello, goodbye, and peace, and Shekinah which he defined as the, quote, uh, feminine aspect of God who supposedly was created to live among humans, end quote. The Shekinah, Nimoy has said, was also the name of the prayer he participated in as a boy that inspired the salute. The prayer meant to, meant to bless the congregation um, is named after the feminine aspect of God. Nimoy explained in a 2012 post on the Star Trek site, the light, from, quote, the light from this deity could be very damaging, so we are told to protect ourselves by closing our eyes, end quote, he wrote in the blog. Uh, quote, they got their talits over their heads, and they started this chanting. And again, uh, he's referring to this right here. So I guess these are called talits. Okay, I'm doing a chanting. Um, let's see... Nimoy says in the 2013 interview, quote, And my father said to me, don't look. At first he, he obliged, but what he, could, but what he could hear intrigued him. Quote, I thought, something major is happening here, so I peeked. And I saw them with their hands stuck out from beneath the talit like this, Nimoy said, showing the V with both, both of his hands. I, ha I had no idea what was going on, but the sound of it and the look of it was magical. After witnessing the ritual all those years ago, Nimoy practiced making the V with his fingers as a child. He never dreamed uh, he would one day make the gesture so publicly and repeatedly as an adult. Uh, that was, he said, until a Star Trek script required his character Spock to go home to Vulcan. Quote, it was the first time we'd seen other Vulcans, uh, other people of my race. So I was hoping to find some t some touching. Uh, so I was hoping to find some touching that could help develop the the Vulcan sociology. Nimoy said, "I think we should have sp I think we should have some special greeting that Vulcans do." Nimoy recalled saying he suggested the prayer gesture from his childhood. So this was completely his idea. He was like, you know, I guess it wasn't originally part of the script. They weren't planning on that. And he's like, you know, what? I think that they should have a special greeting. Uh, and then he says, boy, that just took off. It just touched a magic chord. He noted that, quote, most people to this day still don't know the history of the greeting, although he repeatedly and enthusiastically shared its origin. Laughing, Nimoy revealed the best part of it all. Quote, people don't realize they're blessing each other with this. So that's just an interesting thing 
um, about this. This is the this is where live long and prosper comes from, right here, right here. Okay, so let's move on. Um, so as they're doing that, the priests recite Numbers chapter six, verses twenty three to twenty seven. May the Lord bless you and guard you. May the Lord make his face shed light upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his face unto you and give you peace. In biblical Israel, the temple was the center of the Passover holiday as the entire nation arrived to sacrifice the Paschal Lamb and celebrate the Seder as individual families. The biannual priestly blessing is an impressive reminder of the glory of the Jewish people coming together as a nation to serve God, something that was entirely lacking until the Jews returned to Jerusalem less than 50 years ago. Um, okay, and then after that, uh, Sefer Harokaach uh, by Rabbi Eliezer of Worms, uh, 1176 to 12. 38 states that, quote, if 300 Kohanim were standing on the Mount of Olives, they could say the, pri the priestly blessing, uh, the Messiah would come. Okay, and that's the end of that article. So uh, we have this going on. Uh, Arabs not happy about it, but it is something that takes place, I guess, every Passover. Uh, they're going to do another one tomorrow. There are live cams if you want to watch it. Um, so that's available for anyone that's interested. Now, okay, let's move on to this. Right-wing activists plan Jerusalem flag march amid Temple Mount tensions. Um, so what's going on with that? Okay, here you have a bunch of people with um, flags. Let's see, participants stance outside Damascus Gate during the flag march in Jerusalem on Tuesday. Uh, Right-wing activists plan to march around the walls of the old city of Jerusalem on Wednesday afternoon, despite lacking police approval for the event. So, this is something that is uh, not helping as far as uh, tensions go. The old city youth <clears throat> organized, or the old city youth organization and other right wing groups announced on Tuesday uh, today that police had refused to secure a flag march. The groups plan the groups plan to hold around the walls of the old city of old city on Wednesday afternoon. According to the groups, police claim that the request for security was made too close to the date of the event. The groups responded that they quote could not have known that there would be terrorist attacks and that the old city would be desolate during the intermediary days of the holiday, which are usually its peak days. The group rejected the police's request to reschedule the march, saying, quote, The police are essentially declaring to the citizens of Israel that there is no security in the old city during Passover, a worrying statement in terms of morals and security, end quote. Uh, the groups stressed that they intend to march in any case on Wednesday at 5 p.m., telling police, quote, You've forgotten your role. We'll march. You secure it. So they're being kind of defiant, and I, I, I'm sure that this could be a flashpoint during this whole series of different things that have been going on since Friday. Uh, additionally, on Monday, the Association of Israeli Community Rabbis, headed by Safed Chief Rabbi Shmuel Aliyahu, uh, claimed that Isra Israel police <clears throat> would not let them hold festive prayers this year at the Davidson Center along the southern wall of the Temple Mount Plaza. The association claimed that the decision was made by police due to concerns that could quote-unquote anger Arabs. The association stressed that it would hold the prayer services in any case and called police to secure the event. So you have these things that um, the police don't want to authorize uh and of course you know they have their job to do they have to try and keep things calm uh, and it's like no matter what they do they always turn out to be the bad guys either to one side or the other so that's not a very good position to be in and then you have these groups that uh insist on carrying out their their activities so um Anyway, moving on, clashes broke out on the Temple Mount for the fourth day in a week on Tuesday morning as 853 Jews visited the site. Now, 
um, I would encourage you, I would highly, highly encourage you, watch this video right here. I watched this yesterday. Uh, this was posted yesterday, so I think it was yesterday. And uh, this is a guy that basically um, went on one of the tours that Jews, Christians, and others are allowed to go on on the Temple Mount, but it's only dur during certain days and certain hours, which I didn't have much knowledge of before. Um, I didn't really know how that worked. I, I, I guess what I, I what I pictured in my head up until this point is I thought that Jews could just, like, during those hours, they were free to go up and just, like, roam around and do what they wanted to. But it, from what I can tell, it seems that they have to stay in these groups and escorted by police. So it's not just something where you can go up and do whatever. you. It's part of a tour. They go up to the Temple Mount. Uh, they walk around it in a group. And that's it. And there's not supposed to be any praying, like this guy is doing right here. Uh, there's not supposed to be any flags, any um, religious um, items. Uh, not so much like their the kippas or whatever that they wear on the heads, but like other religious items. Um, so, and you can see this guy right here. He's walking barefoot. Uh, not all of them are, but a lot of them feel that they need to. It's a religious requirement to be barefoot uh, while up there. Uh, you can see a bunch of rocks and stuff right here. I think that the guy was saying that this is normally the route that they would they would take. But um, as we're about to read in just a little bit, uh, this week uh, the Palestinians have put like rocks and broken glass and stuff like that uh, because they know that many of the Jews will will walk barefoot up here. So they they just want to cause uh, disruptions and they don't like these groups right here that walk around. In the background here, there's a, a guy that's, it, it's a Muslim member of the Waqf, which is the Jordanian um, organization or whatever that oversees, administers the, the Temple Mount for Muslims. They're like the authority of the Temple Mount, and he's walking along with the group, uh, video, you know, taking video of them, um, watching for anybody that's praying or whatever doing stuff that they're not supposed to do. Um, <clears throat> looks like this guy's getting in trouble for praying or doing something. Anyway, I can't remember, but I did watch this whole thing, and uh, I, I would encourage you to watch it. Uh, it. It really feels like you're actually, well, you, you really are, you're, you're witnessing one of these tours, so you can get a sense of like what it's like as a Jewish person being allowed to go up and... Uh, visit the Temple Mount, okay? And uh, the Palestinians do not like it at all. So, continuing on, Arabs at the site attempted to block the pathways used by Jewish visitors um, to the site in the morning with large stones. According to the Hamas-affiliated Al-Rasala news site, Arabs also placed broken glass on the pathways since Jewish visitors often walk barefoot at the site uh, due to religious law. As security forces entered the site to secure it for Jewish visitors, Arabs fired fireworks at them, with Israeli forces responding with firing tear gas. As Jewish visitors toured the site, the Arabs barricaded in Al-Aqsa Mosque played the sound of rocket sirens and speeches by Hamas's Al-Qassam Brigade's spokesperson Abu Obeda. Arabs also shouted slogans at Jewish visitors and banged on the doors and windows of the mosque and the Dome of the Rock. Um, a number of Arabs were arrested during the Jewish visits. Now, I actually have video on that of that on my Twitter, uh, videos that I've retweeted. Uh, feel free to follow me on Twitter. Um, here is a video of the airstrike last night that happened. Okay, and then here's another view right here. Okay, um, here it looks like you have the um, 
what we were just reading, uh, a group, go, a, a Jewish group going by on one of these tours as people are like saying things to them or yelling at them or whatever. <laughs> Okay, here's another one. Um, what else do we have? There's this right here. So you can see that things are pretty tense. Here's like a staring match between these two. <laughs> so, so you can think you can see that things are uh, pretty intense, pretty intense right now. Um, and I'm feeling that things are going to continue to escalate. Um, the Temple Mount is open to Jewish visitors from 7 a.m. to 10, 10.30 a.m. on Wednesday and Thursday this week. I don't know, I don't know what the normal hours are. Um, police reject plan by right-wing activists to <clears throat> march Wednesday around, uh, Jerusalem Old City. But it seems like it's going to happen any, anyway. Uh, Matin Peleg told Army Radio, quote, All those who wanted to come to the Capitol during Passover suffered a moral blow. We want to show there's nothing to fear. Uh, nationalists traditionally hold a flag dance in parts of the Old City for Jerusalem Day, which marks the reunification of the city <clears throat> after Israeli forces captured East Jerusalem during the including the Old City and its holy sites from Jordan in the, 19, the 1967 Six-Day War. The parade last year was rescheduled after Hamas fired rockets at Jerusalem as the march was held, sparking 11 days of intense fighting between Israel and Palestinian terror groups in the Gaza Strip. Now, I'm sure that you've seen this before, uh, if you follow these things. So, this was last year. Uh, so it says, footage shows blaze on Temple Mount during Jerusalem Day celebrations. And uh, there's a fire up there, but it was caused by Palestinians that were that had like uh, fireworks and it caught a tree on fire. So uh, at the time, I don't think very many people knew what was going on, but it really excited, it seems, the, the crowd below. Um, I'm going to play this. Okay, so this is what it looked like, and it doesn't matter what was actually happening here. Uh, this this caused you know a really strong emotional psychological response in a lot of people, and um, there were people that were saying that this was an imminent a, a sign that the, the the Messiah was imminent among um, you know Jews and rabbis and so forth, which doesn't mean a whole lot to us other than the fact that their minds are being prepared for the second coming, I believe. But um, this right here really kind of like intensified things from my point of view. Um, again, even though nothing really was going on rather than other than just the Jerusalem Day celebration and then a Palestinian protest, just the scene right here, I think that this really stuck in everybody's minds and kind of heightened tensions and stuff. Uh, Jerusalem Day, let's see what, when that is. When is Jerusalem Day? That's going to be May 8th. So 
begins the evening of May 8th, so sundown, May, sorry, May 28th until, and then, um, so basically May 29th, starts on May 28th and then May 29th. All right, so anyway, um, let's continue on. Now, the big fear is that there's going to be another, uh, something similar to last year, 11-day war, although, it, of course, it could go longer, it could turn into the final war for all anybody knows, but we'll just have to see. Israel strikes targets in Gaza following rocket fire. Here's some more pictures of that. The Israeli Air Force struck targets in the Gaza Strip overnight on Tuesday in response to earlier rocket fire launched toward southern Israel. And uh, I, I, as far as I've been able to tell, there, there was just one rocket that was fired. Uh, quote, fighter planes attacked a number of targets and destroyed a Hamas weapons production facility. Uh, Israel regards Hamas as responsible for all events in and from the Strip said an IDF spokesperson. Hamas uh, spokesman Hazim Qasem said that there were no injuries in the strikes that targeted a site west of Khan Yunus and claimed anti-aircraft fire was launched at the planes. The, quote, Zionist bombing of empty sites is a failed attempt to pre prevent our Palestinians, Palestinian people from defending the city of Jerusalem. End quote. According to reports, a Russian-made Strela SA-7 shoulder-to-air missile was fired at Israeli jets. Okay, so you had that. So this this right here is an escalation. The rocket and then the um, airstrikes, which it, it, it seems to me, you know, as I've watched this over the years, that usually airstrikes uh, kind of escalate things like when it's like the first round of airstrikes so I, I would think that this is probably the beginning of something and um this planned um march uh tomorrow uh probably isn't going to help things and neither will this other the other thing that we were reading that was planned for tomorrow so things are kind of getting a little bit out of control um it's a, okay now here's the last thing that we're going to look at uh israelis march to West Bank's Homesh amid tensions with Palestinians. Let me see if I can find where that is. Homesh, Israel. Is that a place? Um, okay, we'll, we'll just read through this and maybe it'll say exactly where it is. Um, now, here here's that, here's that girl, Edith uh, Silman. She's the one that pulled out of the coalition, and now um, it's basically uh, the the Neset is like half and half. Half of it is for the coalition, and half of it is against it. And uh, we have the Ram party, which is the Islamic party that has put their uh, participation in the coalition on, on freeze, at least temporarily, which is mostly just a symbolic gesture because the Neset's not in session right now. But it could encourage more people to just jump ship. So if that happens, uh, things could get even worse. But anyway, uh, she's here uh, for this controversial thing that's happening. It says, Thousands of right-wing activists marched Tuesday to Hamesh to stake their claim to the remote West Bank, West Bank hilltop that Israel abandoned 17 years ago, despite heavy criticisms from the left uh, for stoking tensions with Palestinians. Um, quote, we came to commit to settling all areas of the land of Israel, said M.K. Bezalel Shmotrik. Uh, those at the march demanded that the government authorize the Homesh Yeshiva, which is illegally located on the hilltop, to rebuild the Homesh settlement that was destroyed in 2005 after the Gaza pullout. Shmotrik, who heads the religious Zionist party, is among other po those politicians who want to see an all-right government replacing the existing coalition made up of the parties uh, on the right, center, and left of the political map, including the Israeli Arab party, Ram, the one, what we were just talking about. He says, I have no expectations from this government that has, sur has surrendered to Islam. Uh, down here, MK... Um, that must stand for a member of the Neset. I'm not exactly sure. So anyway, M.K. Edith Silman uh, from the Yamina party, 
who sparked a political crisis when she resigned from the coalition earlier this month, also participated in the march. And then here she is again. So uh, this probably doesn't help things either. And uh, this is from today. So you have a lot of, um, and I'm not really taking sides, you know, I'm trying to be just objective and uh, neutral, but um, it seems like both sides are, they're, they're kind of both escalating things. We have Hamas that had that banner that was up calling for a general mobilization. Um, from what we read, and, and I don't know all the facts, but just from what we read, it says that Pal Palestinian youth kind of started everything by throwing rocks and bottles and stuff like that at Israeli police on Friday. Um, and, and it just feels like everyone's kind of like daring each other. There's, It feels like there's just kind of like a, a pushing match, you know. Everyone's just like trying to push the other one to do something crazy, I, I think. I, I don't know. Um, of course, that's not the argument that any of these people would make. They would they would say, "Well, we're we're doing this to defend to defend our people and our people's rights," but um, it, it's just kind of it's it's not a good it's not a good situation. It really, really is not. Um, you know, I don't know what's going to happen, but it seems like there's going to be further escalation tomorrow. Uh, when this happens, I, I guarantee there's going to be some kind of counter protest or even violence against these people as they march. Um, I assume that the police, even though they rejected the plan, they probably still would be there. They, they'd have to be there to help maintain peace. So I, I don't think that they have much of a choice. Um, and then this, uh, wait, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to find it again. I don't know. Anyway, so tell me what you think in the comments below. Um, do you think that things are going to continue to burn, that it's going to escalate? Uh, I think that it kind of is. I'm surprised that it's kind of actually taking this long. It, it feels kind of like a slow burn, but I, I don't really see too much of an end in sight, although it could. It could just fizzle out. Um, yeah. Okay, well that's going to be it for this one, so if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, uh, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below, also make sure to share this, and I'll talk to you guys later.